Right, so I have just spent a whole week with this Tesla Model S here. Right, and now there's two big factors with this video. One, my name's Calvin, and I am an absolutely massive petrol head, right? That's factor number one. Obviously, this is an electric car, yeah? Factor number two is this particular car is a high mileage Tesla. This is the cheapest Tesla on the net, um, and it's the first Tesla Model S that they ever made, all right? So, seven days with a high mileage, cheap, Model S Tesla uh, with a petrol head. Let's get on the video. guys it's an 85 kilowatt tesla model s it's a 2014 car which was actually the first of the tesla model s right the first mass produced tesla going and the things i was skeptical of when this car came in a week ago is well it is the entry level car it's uh like i say it's, it's old technology it is high mileage like i was thinking how good is this battery going to be is it going to last very long is the motor going to be okay what's the wear and tear going to be like on the car is it going to be well worn it's done 138,000 miles by the way which you know these things ain't been round round for long enough to, for us to know how good they are with this kind of mileage and a lot of things like how well was I going to get on with the technology inside the car is that going to be dated like I've heard that they've updated a lot of this stuff over the years and all these things I was very very I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was concerned about but I was very curious to know how good or bad this was going to be and obviously like I said earlier I am a massive petrol head there's no doubt about it I love petrol engine cars I'm happily to settle for like a diesel every now and then like we've got a 330 d there just come in happily sort of maybe venture to the diesel world but i've never ever ventured into the electric world so for me this was an exciting experience uh but also an experience that i don't know i'm not ready for this transition yet and it's not something that i'm <laughs> i'm not too on side with it i'll be honest with you so yeah when i first got the car it came in with about 150 miles left on the range on the battery i do about 200 miles a week so there was going to be a time during that week that i would need to charge the car now the first thing i had to do the first hurdle i had to get over was unlocking the car right so you've got this quite a fancy little key with like invisible buttons is that focusing that's focusing yeah you can't see the buttons guys because it, they're invisible yeah so um i've walked up to the car and i'm looking at the key and i'm waiting for it to unlock it's got these like fancy flush door handles they're quite smart aren't they um but i'm waiting for the car to unlock it's not unlocking i'm thinking how the hell am i going to unlock this car and i discovered that it, these in this thing here does actually have buttons right so if you look up close that little t button at the front there if you press that press that twice and then I revealed how to open the bonnet, but obviously this is an electric car, guys. Most bonnets have engines under the bonnets, but this car just has a, like a storage space, which is absolutely brilliant. Like that is a plus over your usual car, like the BMW in the background there. Obviously you have no storage space under the bonnet. Now I continued clicking around this key and press that one there. And hey presto, the boot opens, yeah? So I, I knew I was getting there slowly, right? We've got a, a big boot as well, guys. Those that like, practicality i do personally but then after some googling around like genuinely i was googling it youtubing it how to unlock my tesla there wasn't any other idiots out there like me that had the same problem i then just sort of continued clicking around and then double clicked this button on the roof here we go and then and there you go guys the handles come out and you can open the car and the wear on this car isn't bad at all right because one of my my things my concerns were is it going to be really worn you can see on the edge of the door card here that door card or the pillar because you're having to get, brush past that every time you go in and out there is a bit of wear on the side there but because that's taken all the grunt of the wear the bolster of the seat doesn't at all so there is no wear on the bolster at all the steering wheel there is no wear on that steering wheel either the door handles they're all quite smart and very posh in here very nicely laid out again it's all there is there is nowhere there is literally nowhere on the inside of this car it's had one owner from new um and it is out of warranty now guys that's something really worth talking about we will continue talking about that shortly all right so my son kai absolutely loves teslas by the way and one of the things i was massively excited about was picking him up from school in it and his reaction when i picked him up was priceless kai do you like a tesla yeah what's actually your favorite car is tesla, tesla ain't your favorite car is it yeah. is it really 
you love Teslas. This is the first time you've ever been in one, isn't it? Yeah, first time. Okay. Yeah. Feel the Tesla power, yeah. Yeah. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh my god! Let's go for a drive. We're also going to do draggy times on this car. It weighs 2,100 kilos. It's got 380 horsepower, and we're going to do 20 to 70 mile now. 20 to 70 mile hour draggy times to see how it compares against all of the petrol cars on my draggy leaderboard. All right. Let's hit the roads. I'll talk to you about how I feel about driving it because there was one other thing I was really concerned about was I suffer with travel sickness. I didn't tell you that, guys. I suffer with travel sickness. Teslas give me horrible travel sickness because they have regenerative braking. So when you let off the throttle pedal, it just automatically brakes. Um, yeah, as a passenger, it is not a nice place to be at all. So one of my biggest concerns was as a driver, was I gonna sense travel sickness or not, all right? So we'll get on the road, still loads more to talk about. I still need to show you some clips from the week that I've had, and um, yeah, we'll conclude how I feel about this car, all right? Let's hit the road. That's it, jump in here. Right, so a van pulls up just as I jump in and film on the interior. He's now gonna want directions of where to go or where should he drop his parcel. So what I'm gonna do is quickly deal with him first. Oh, it's control custom steering wheel, that's perfect. That must be the steering wheel for the Golf GTI that got won by, uh, who did it get won by? Of course it was. It was Nicky from St. Leonard's on Sea, is that right? Yes, St. Leonard's on Sea. So the Tesla, that's what you're here for. The interior of this car, it's actually quite a nice place to be. Uh, you've got a digi dash in front, I say digi dash, it's like an LCD, LED, whatever display. It does everything as it should. Uh, this uh, infotainment system, like this big iPad in front of you here, it, um, it's bloody brilliant. And a lot of people said, like I said earlier, that this is supposedly quite slow. It's not very, um, doesn't respond as you'd want it to. I completely disagree with all of that because it's actually really, really good. Let me just turn the heater fan down, uh, which I don't actually know how to do. It is a very peaceful car as well, by the way, guys, because uh, it's electric. Remember, it's electric, yeah? Uh, yeah, so this uh, this is all very, very good, right? I've not fully got the gist of it yet. I've not got my head around it fully, but I, I'm getting there with it, and personally, I absolutely rate it, guys, it's brilliant, all right? So uh, I need to tell you about the headache I had charging this car midway through the week. What we'll do now is we'll get on the roads, talk about how it drives, talk about travel sickness, and then um, we'll talk about the charging thing, yeah? Seatbelt on, put it in drive, guys. No noise at all. Nice light power steering with this big, chunky, ugly steering wheel. I'm gonna put that out there. Uh, looks like it's been stolen off of a Maserati Ghibli, maybe, uh, which, surprisingly isn't a very high quality car in my opinion and that's something that i was very skeptical about is just the quality of this car generally american car brands just putting it out there that they don't they don't have the finish that say german brands do yeah and this car definitely definitely doesn't we'll talk about if that bothered me or not when we get on the road all right let's go here we go indicators on and pull out slowly in super silent tesla Indicator stalk, by the way, out of a Mercedes-Benz and the gear selector stalk there is also from a Mercedes-Benz, along with the electric window buttons, again, from a Mercedes, all right? So, like I said earlier, the regenerative braking takes a bit of getting used to. It's a bit of a strange experience, but it's surprisingly natural. Like, it doesn't feel too weird at all. So when you let off your foot off your brake, the car just applies a bit of braking power, probably putting power into the battery. I don't fully know how it all works, uh, but there is a little, uh, uh, an, a dial on the dash there, just indicating whether you're using power or regenerating power, right? So when you let your foot off, it begins to regen, okay? Uh, that there is the prime suspect that makes me feel sick when I'm sat in the passenger seat of a Tesla. Now, if I sit in the rear of any car, in the back seat of any car, I get bad travel sick. Uh, travel sickness. If I sit in the passenger seat, I don't get it quite as bad. This is like on a normal car, but I do get it over a period of time. If I sit in the driver's seat of a normal car, I'm fine. I can drive forever and not experience travel sickness, okay? In a Tesla, I can't sit in the passenger seat or the rear seat whatsoever because it just makes me feel so ill. It's like the car's constantly seesawing. It's like, I don't know, it's supposed to like being in a car with a bad driver. It's really, really it's just not a nice experience. But then the big question is, as a driver of a Tesla, am I getting travel sickness? And the answer to that is no, I am not. And this is something that I was really concerned about. I always thought I could never have a Tesla because 
it just makes me feel, it's gonna make me feel rough, right? But I can honestly say that I have not experienced one bit of travel sickness. Now I'm making a big point of this, guys, because to me, this was massive. Like if anyone out there suffers, suffers with travel sickness or has been in a Tesla and experienced travel sickness, don't worry, if you're gonna drive one, I think you'll be fine driving one, all right? Possibly, in my experience, I am. Now, let's talk about the midweek charging challenge that I had, right? So, I was driving the car, and it showed 150 miles left on the range, but I noticed the range was going down quicker than my the mileage I was doing was, meaning uh, it wasn't too accurate. Now, it is cold at the minute. It's been about five degrees-ish as an average temperature, I'd say, throughout the week, which does go against batteries, right? We all know batteries don't perform as well in the cold. Granted, I'll give it that, that's fair enough, right? So I did notice it going down uh, quite quickly and I was getting a bit concerned. I was thinking, I need to charge this car. Didn't matter, because I've got a charging point at Binker, right? I've got a little power lead. I thought I'd just pull up one day and charge it. And the, that didn't go to plan either. Yeah. Unable to charge, charge station not powered. See, it didn't really matter because I had about 50 miles left in the range. So I thought, I don't know what I'll do. I'll just drive it home and then I'll sort it out tomorrow morning probably the worst thing I, I could have done because the next day was a Friday, right? And Friday is hashtag free Friday. I had the live draw for Planet Dreams. I did not have time to mess around charging my Tesla, but I had to make time because I had about 20 miles left in the range. Right, here I am, look, I'm currently in Dunstable and I've got 41 miles left on the range in the Tesla, right? Tesla. Um, and my nearest charging point, according to this, the map up here is six miles away at Luton Airport, right? I am not going to Luton Airport. I'm going down to Bletchley, which is just about here near Milton Keynes. That's where Binker is. So I'm heading, uh, just got to quickly go somewhere in Dunstable and then go to Bletchley, right? That's about 15 miles away, okay? Um, so by the time I get there, and I'm in a massive rush today, by the way, because it is hashtag free Friday. I've got a lot to do, need to give away a car, and I have not got time to stop and charge this car anywhere, right? So I ain't got a clue what I'm gonna do. I might have to end up parking this car up because yeah, this range is, um, you know, I ain't got enough range to do any more journeys today. So no idea at this point what I'm gonna do. So I thought the best thing to do is maybe go to the local Tesco's. I've done that and yeah. This is it, we are at Tesco's now, guys. Are they all full? Ah, oh, sorted. Look, there's loads of charging points here and there is literally just one available. So uh, I'm gonna spin it in there. Now, apparently to charge the car, you've got to press this little power icon up here. Um, open charge port, because I have done a bit of learning. And then in the mirror there, you can see that the little charge port's just flicked out of the rear there. Now I have got the supercharging adapter here, but I'm pretty sure that is only available at supercharging uh, power points, all right? Where I'm guessing this one here is not for supercharging. We'll go find out, yeah? Oh, there's actually two sockets. Are they sockets or two guns or whatever they're called? Oh, there's that style. Oh my God, you actually have to pay. I, I, thought, this was, I thought this stuff was free. <laughs> I have this adapter. Let's see. I've got no idea what I'm doing. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, so that there. Uh, da, 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 da. That goes in there. That's what she said. Like so, yeah. And then that looks like that fits in. Does that fit in there? Yeah, it looks the same, doesn't it? Yeah, let's get that in there. That's in. We are getting there. Now what do I do? and then press the start button on the charger. Oh no. I'm guessing that means this has got an error. Has this got an error? No idea what I'm doing at this point. This definitely ain't working, is it? Right, should we download the app? Let's download the app. Mm, the reviews don't look very good today. Yeah. Oh, hold on a minute. Does that mean this is just, I, I didn't even see this sign here. Does that mean this is just for Volkswagens? No way. This is a joke, man. Right. I think we're gonna have to go find somewhere else. Stupid thing. Give me that back. Stick that back in there. So after I was done at Tesco's, I then went over to Asda in Milton Keynes, which is just around the corner. I thought, well, it's a big Asda. Surely they've got electric charging points. And um, yeah, this happened. Oh, right, here we go, Asda. Yes, there must be some charging points here for Teslas. Oh no, the lights just went red. Yeah, that. I don't think they even had any there. Next door to Asda, there is an Ikea. Of all places, there's got to be charging points in Ikea. They're well up to date, aren't they? Then I spotted a car 
sign with a logo of a plug inside. Oh, here we go. There's a sign up there with an electric car charging point symbol. So there must be some this way. Let's go find one. There is my glory moment. I have found the charger. By this point, I've got hardly any range left in the in the petrol tank. The, you know, range thing. And um, I pulled up. There's a space there. Oh, yes. Right. Right here. Right here, Calf. Is it this way? Oh, yes. Look. Honestly, I have not got time for this. This is a bloody mission. Battery level low. Yes, I know my bloody battery level's low, guys. It's at 11.09 now. Oh, my God. I've got to do the live, live stream at 12 o'clock. Yeah, open charge port. Right, let's, let's go and do this, yeah? CCS. Yeah, I've got the CCS. There we go. That's it. Oh, first, let your output. Yes. Now connect. That's it. Get you in there, son. You're connected. Yeah, that's locked. Present card. That worked. Processing. Preparing to charge. Setting up communication to the car. Guys, I think I've done it. Yeah. So what is it? It's like two hours later nearly now and the Tesla is apparently fully charged. I had to get a lift back to Binka. I've got a lift here because uh, I thought there's no way I'm standing around for two hours. But if you look on the app, it does say that it's 90% charged, which is like the recommended charging time. And the thing that I'm most curious about is how much does it actually cost? Because I didn't sound stupid, guys. I thought this stuff was free, but um, I had to pay for it. So let's see how much it is yeah so i still don't know how much i've paid to charge the car so it's showing 197 miles now left in the range but i've got no idea how much it's charged me it shows a pound on my statement but surely it ain't just it ain't just charged me a pound that would be mega cheap wouldn't it surely it does show 39 pence per kilowatt on the machine there though so i wonder if it tells me how many kilowatts i just just stole from that machine let's have a look yeah no idea but i will try and tell you before the end of this video all right so yeah i did eventually find somewhere to park the car and i can conclude that it did only cost me one pound but, but i suppose the inconvenience factor does it outweigh yeah it was just so inconvenient i am such a busy person i haven't got time for farting around charging my car so that was kind of um it was just a it was a palava it was a bloody palava so um but i did feel massively relieved when i eventually had a full fully charged tesla in my life all right i haven't talked about performance yet by the way it's proper quick let's do 20 to 70 mile an hour times now yeah i've got my draggy box here somewhere no idea where here we go i think this car if it starts with a six that would be amazing if it done any quicker than that that would be incredible. There's some serious competition in the fives and the sixes. Uh, let's just head to the draw carriageway and get on it, yeah? Ready? Three, two, one. Instant throttle response. It just jumps off the line. I would say it feels possibly less powerful. There we go. I would say it kind of feels like it, yeah, loses performance as you get up the rev range. I say rev range, speed range. Um, first run was 6.28 seconds. So early sixes, that's pretty good. I'll do a couple more and see if we can beat that, all right? Three, two, one. Strange experience, no gears, just one single speed and off you go. Done. I do miss gears, you know that? I really, really miss gears. Uh, something else, blimey, that speed, that time was almost identical, 6.23 seconds. Now I remember doing the draggy times with Ibby in the Tesla Model 3 performance. And uh, yeah, we just set 10, we seem to do consistent draggy times. So I can't imagine we're gonna beat that. 6.23 seconds, that ain't bad at all. Let's have a quick look at the draggy leaderboard, see how that compares to some of the other cars. Blimey, Porsche Boxster S, it's almost as quick as that, which is quite impressive, but the Boxster S is 100 horsepower less. So that ain't impressive at all really, is it? But this car isn't about performance, it's a commuter, and I'll just conclude my uh, feeling on that shortly. Now, let's quickly talk about the warranty period on these cars. So, it's got a four year warranty, as with most cars nowadays, they have sort of three to four years, and that covers everything. But the battery and uh, motor have an eight year warranty with a limit of 150,000 miles, whichever comes first, right? That's seriously impressive. Now, this car is now out of warranty because of the age of it. 
So you'd be thinking, well, that's a bit worrying. So is, is the battery and the motor at a time in its life now where it needs replacing? Now, replacing. Now, luckily with this car, both have been replaced under warranty prior to it exiting its warranty period. So this particular car is a great example of an old Tesla Model West. But if I, I think if I was buying one uh, of this age, of this mileage, I would be quite concerned or skeptical about buying one if it didn't have that work done because it's seemingly like or it's seeming like that the the lifespan of the battery is around that sort of time i don't know that for certain definitely do your research but uh this car because it has had it it would um it is it, it's, it's, what's the one got behind me i'm guessing it'll be fine for a good few more years left yeah there we go he just done a tether didn't he values that's something that we need to talk about so this car i think the book value the retail book value of this car is about 25 26 thousand pound okay according to water trader now Mm, that's probably a little bit low based on what's currently on the market. I think the cheapest Tesla Model S currently is about £28,000. But in fairness, that's done quite a lot less mileage. This is uh, this is at the warranty work, so I would make I would personally think that makes it more valuable. Really difficult to say, uh, but it is going to be going up for sale in that sort of region. Okay, sort of t between twenty-six and twenty-eight thousand pounds. Now, uh, the experience that I've had driving this car. Honestly, I've actually quite liked it. Like, I personally got in this car with the expect expectation that I wouldn't rate it, I wouldn't enjoy it, and I, I couldn't see myself driving one. And I still don't see myself driving one. I don't feel like I want to go out and treat myself to a Tesla or any kind of electric car, not yet anyway. But one thing that I am so impressed with is the fact that I fully charged this car on a pound. Now, the, way, the rate at which the mileage went down the, the mileage that the car showed, I would say in actual terms, I've probably got about 60 or 70% of the mileage in real life, if that makes sense. But then a petrol car does that as well. So a petrol car, like my M5, for example, would say, I've got 300 miles left in my range when I fill the tank. But in fact, it would only do 200 miles. And that will cost me a hundred pound in petrol. A t this car here would probably do about 150 miles on a full charge. And it's, it would cost me a pound if I charge it at, uh, Ikea so one thing I would say is if you are driving a car every day and you are just commuting that's your purpose for having a car if you're just commuting you're driving from A to B and you're currently driving say a BMW 320i petrol SE with no spec and you're putting petrol in it all the time I just I just don't see why you would do that I, I don't know why you anyone would do that is there any benefit to driving an average car and putting fuel in it all the time if you have no enjoyment from that car or you don't care about enjoying your car if you're just driving it to commute surely you need to get an electric car like i've been thinking about my mum she don't care about cars she just wants to get in her car and drive it from a to b but she's putting petrol in it every week she don't really need to do that but me as a petrol head because i enjoy driving i look forward to getting in my m5 and, and making a bit of noise having a bit of fun flicking through the gears and um experience experiencing the sound and the drama of a proper petrol engine for me it's worth every single penny i absolutely love driving a noisy petrol engine love it if you looked at performance now this car hasn't performed quite like um i kind of expected it would i suppose it does feel quite quick uh, but some of these electric cars do outperform most big petrol cars right and that's a bit embarrassing but then you always come back to is it all about performance? Is it really all about performance? Or do you just get a different sense of enjoyment as a petrol head when you're driving a petrol engine car? And I think you definitely do. This car has not given me any fulfillment, any sense of enjoyment. Some of the time I'm just driving down the road and I'm just in my own world, which I generally am anyway. Um, and uh, it's it's taking me home you know i'm just i'm it's, i'm driving but i'm not connecting with the car i'm not enjoying the journey to and from work anymore i'm just commuting but it does do a very very good job of that i have just been filming the cinematics i've discovered an adapter in the boot a tesla adapter that might have helped me on my drama when charging this car that might have been the thing i needed to charge the car i don't know i've not i've yet to conclude that but my overall experience with the Tesla for this week has been, it's actually been quite good. <laughs> Which, I don't know if I'm annoyed about it, I don't know if I'm happy about it, but for an entry level electric car, this thing has been absolutely brilliant.
it's been so good. It's done as it should. It's been charging really well. Like it's, it's, it's been, it's been holding its power surprisingly well. Uh, my only ever experience with an electric car has been with the G Wiz, and you saw how bad that was. I've got 30 miles on a full charge in that car. So uh, this is so impressive in comparison all right so um yeah i think i've covered everything i probably haven't i definitely haven't covered everything there's so many things i could talk about i'm gonna leave it at that thank you very much for watching hope you like this video if you did like this video if you want to know any more about a tesla do hit me in the comments below i know there's a lot of miss as i'm sort of letting off the throttle pedal the brakes are pressing there's so many things i could talk about with this car it could go on and on and on if you want to see any more content on any electric cars do let me know in the comments below like i say just keep uh, fire questions at me and i will answer as many as i possibly can if you're in the market to buy something like this and you're feeling a bit concerned i do hope this video has helped you conclude what you're about to do uh, i am doing a little project on my G Wiz. If you've not seen that video yet, where I've uh, had it wrapped, so I'm about to do some more stuff to it. We've put a Tesla badge in there. Look out for videos on that. I'm gonna wrap it up. Hit like if you like this video. Hit subscribe if you're new to my channel for a new video every Wednesday and Sunday at six o'clock. And if you're on Instagram, give me a follow on Instagram at Calvin's Car Diary. And I'll see you in my next video. All right, bye.